Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my book haul for February 2021. Filming it a day late because I was waiting for one book to arrive in the mail, but I, but I feel like I can still count it. You know, there could be a little bit of a grace period here. <laughs> so I guess I'll start with that book, which is really one of two books. The book that just came is The Man Who Ate Too Much, The Life of James Beard by John Birdsall, and I'm pairing it with Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. I will be reading both of these books in March for the Booktube Prize, where I'm judging for nonfiction Group H, and uh, I'm pretty sure, especially with this one, that I would never get them in the library in time, and I have to read them by the end of this month for the judging. And uh, I can't tell you much more because I am judging these books. I'll just briefly mention that this is a biography of a famous chef, and this is a social history about uh, social hierarchies, uh, I think particularly having to do with race. And I will link to more information about the Booktube Prize down below. But in essence, because I don't feel like I've given this spiel in a while, the Booktube Prize looks at uh, literary fiction and nonfiction published in the U.S. the year before, so 2020 for this year. We start with two long lists of 48 uh, titles in each division. That's where we are right now, where we're taking two months to judge the octafinals, several judges per group, and ranking the books one through six, with uh, one being our top book and six being our least favorite. And uh, yeah, at the end of March, uh, we will be hearing the results of uh, which books, which will be half of the total amount, will be heading off to the quarterfinals and which will be eliminated from the prize. And then we get to do this whole process all over again for the quarterfinals. But uh, I don't have to worry about that round right now. I just got to worry about finishing up these octafinal books. Here's a book that I want to uh, read for a readathon in May, or at least I hope this readathon is happening in May. The book is Time and Difference in Rabbinic Judaism by Sarit Katan Gribitz. I talked about this book a few weeks ago because it won the, a scholarship award in the National Jewish Book Awards, and I highlighted a few of those winners and runners-up uh, in a video that I will link down below. And I specifically uh, centered on this one I thought that could be an interesting nonfiction pick for the Maybe Midrash Readathon. Uh, the Maybe Midrash Readathon was started last year by uh, Jason and Felicia and Steve Donahue wherein uh, we were asked to read one book of fiction and one book of nonfiction pertaining to religious themes, and uh, this would definitely fit the bill for Judaism. I'll read from the flap. The rabbinic corpus begins with a question, when, and is brimming with discussions about the time and the relationship between people, God, and the hour. Time and Difference in Rabbinic Judaism explores the rhythms of time that animated the rabbinic world of late antiquity, revealing how rabbis conceptualized time as a way of constructing difference between themselves and imperial Rome, Jews and Christians, men and women, and human and divine. In each chapter, Sarit Katan Gribitz explores a unique aspect of rabbinic discourse on time. She shows how the ancient rabbinic texts artfully subvert Roman imperialism by offering rabbinic time as an alternative to Roman time. She examines rabbinic discourse about the Sabbath, demonstrating how the weekly day of rest is marked Jewish time from Christian time. Gribitz looks at gender daily rituals, showing how rabbis created men's time and women's time by mandating certain rituals for men and others for women. She delves into rabbinic writings that reflect on how God spends time and how God's use of time relates to human beings, merging divine time with human time. Finally, she traces the legacies of rabbinic constructions of time in the medieval and modern periods. Time and Difference in Rabbinic Judaism sheds new light on the central role that time played in the construction of Jewish identity, subjectivity, and theology during this transformative period in the history of Judaism. So I'm excited and a little intimidated, I suppose, by this uh, philosophical subject of sorts. Uh, I already can tell, you know, vaguely of ways that uh, 
we keep the idea of time within how we uh, practice religion today. So uh, that'll be exciting once we get to those later sections. But I'm also just interested to learn more about the Roman period, you know, the beginnings of diaspora, and uh, really when uh, Judaism needed a boost, I suppose, to maintain a separate identity uh, within the Roman Empire. So yeah. And I'm hoping to read it along with this book as my fiction book for the Maybe Midrash Readathon. Uh, I've talked about this book a fair bit in uh, earlier videos. I almost feel like I shouldn't talk about it much now, especially uh, because it's fiction, and otherwise I'm having a completely non-fiction book haul, which is kind of exciting. But yeah, expect me to uh, get to these books in May, I believe, uh, even if uh, we're not officially doing the Maybe Midrash Readathon. Uh, I might just do it on my own, <laughs> so, you know, stay tuned. And finally, this one certainly is the most special one uh, in my book haul today. Uh, this is a miniature of the five books of Moses in this uh, little container. It's from my grandmother's estate. Uh, she died a couple of years ago, uh, and uh, my uncle uh, texted me uh, a few weeks ago to say that, uh, would I like it? And I'm like, well, sure, you know. I'm kind of the Jew it girl of the family, as it were, so I'm always uh, fascinated to uh, get to Judaica uh, to uh, add to my own collection from my grandmother's collection. Uh, although I went ahead and I looked in, uh, you know, to see the bibliographic information, and uh, these were published in Tel Aviv in 1965. You know, I'd always assumed that you know, if it's from my grandmother's collection it would be older, but uh, you know, 1965, it it's uh, when she was, um, you know, a, a mother and, you know, middle-aged, as it were, or, you know, approaching middle age. <laughs> In fact, I got to thinking that, uh, why would these books enter the family at that time? And 1965 would be, like, shortly before my uncle himself became bar mitzvah. So I'm wondering if these books were purchased for him, <laughs> for his bar mitzvah, <laughs> and then he sent them to me. I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm completely... Uh, guessing on that one, and I assume that uh, no one from the family would be able to tell me for sure, you know, where these came from exactly, but they are uh, very special, uh, you know, just a quaint uh, little collection here. So I'm going to display them prominently on my bookshelves. I already took some pictures and put them on my bookstagram, and uh, they tracked nicely. <laughs> So that about covers it for me now. I will leave links to more information about all of these books down below. I hope to be back on this channel in a couple of days to do my first Friday reads of March, so I've got to get chop chopping on my March reading, I suppose. <laughs> hope you all have something exciting to look forward to on your uh, TBRs, and hope my fellow booktube judges are doing well and with their uh, reading so that we can finish all of this up and wrap up the octafinals by the end of the month. Can't wait to see everyone's videos, but that's still a uh, little while's out from now, so I guess I should focus on reading in the meantime. So anyway, thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.